I wanted to immediately start off by saying thank you all for the support, my feelings of companionship in a community have never been so great. I appreciate and love you all. Welcome. So I typically put little stock in NASA or mainstream science or anything that's said about space. But even before I understood about the greater plane, I used to follow space weather. And the idea of space weather was not mainstream. In fact, for the last 20 years I was telling people about solar flares and the potential to knock down the power grid. And most people rolled their eyes and yawned. And again, regardless of what the luminaries are above, or the shape and size of this realm, something is going on up there. And through my own observation and experiences over the last 20 years, I did notice when this website would say solar flare, things would change. The sun's light would be different. It would feel different. Machines, animal behavior, and the power grid itself would begin acting up. And these days I pay little notice to this site, with the exception of nights like this. I thought I'd treat myself to making a video at the coffee shop tonight, an environment that's almost luxury compared to my home living, as I discussed in my last video. And yet while sitting here, over the course of a few hours, the power has gone out, at least five times. And not just at the shop, but the whole town. Tonight, it's about 15 degrees Fahrenheit, and everybody would be concerned about freezing plumbing if it were to last any longer. Kind of putting things into perspective for me. And without mainstream power, this building would quickly become useless with no heat and frozen pipes. And at home, my pipes are officially frozen. But thanks to my solar system, I would still have power and lights, be able to charge my laptop and my wood-burning fireplace, in the end, much more reliable than our undependable grid. Before this coffee shop, I worked maintenance at a hospital. I remember early one morning, I went in and told my coworkers we could have a power outage because we have X-Flare activity. And they laughed, and within the hour, all the power in the hospital shut down, kicking on the backup generators. And in that instance, I'd made believers out of my co-workers. And again, I don't know what this realm is, or the luminaries, but again, this is something. This is something that's observable. Anybody can break out a telescope, or even look directly at the sun with some sort of filter and see these sunspots on the solar luminary above. And so with all this activity, I jumped on today and here we go. Minor geomagnetic storm predicted for October 26th. A stream of solar wind is flowing in to our realm from a northern hole. The auroras should be popping tonight and as we're passing through this stream of solar wind a new massive sunspot squares up with earth and we'll just have to see what happens again i don't believe in the size and distance of the luminaries according to the mainstream however they're key players and part of this bigger picture and i wanted to open up with today's tomb Today's tomb is brought to us by Ryan, and I thank you for this. I was not aware that this glorious building was a tomb. One of my new favorite ridiculous tidbits in the mainstream narrative, the Taj Mahal 
crown of the palace, an ivory-white marble mausoleum in India. It was commissioned in 1632 by some emperor to house the tomb of his favorite wife, and it also houses his tomb. The tomb is the centerpiece of the 42-acre complex, which includes a mosque and a guest house, and is set in formal gardens, bounded on three sides by a wall. Construction was completed in 1643. In today's value, it would be estimated at 70 billion rupees, or 916 million dollars. Let's just call it a billion. The construction project employed some 20,000 artisans under the guidance of a board of architects led by the court architect to the emperor. Pretty high tech for 1643. And just to hammer in this narrative, we have a nice picture of this emperor on a globe provided by the Smithsonian Institute. And here's a little share from Daniel. He says he's visited this structure before. It's very interesting, out in the middle of the woods. And here we can see the Point Set Bridge. Just north of Greenville, the Point Set Bridge was built in 1820 and is believed to be the oldest surviving bridge in South Carolina. Here we go. The oldest bridge in South Carolina. Very advanced for the oldest bridge. I think when it comes to bridges and tunnels, canals, these are going to be some of the oldest, essentially ruins everywhere. A layer of civilization under our feet. And just like all the layers, the oldest being some of the most advanced. And moving on, today I want to look at some Sodom and Gomorrah. This was just sent to me in a comment. Rehashed in recent times. Looks like this video was put out in 2018 and has received over 4 million views. And very, very fascinating. Here's the channel, and I'll leave the link below. And this scientist has been talking about the melting of buildings since 1983. And what a perfect place to find examples of melted buildings, especially when we have old maps and books and histories by our people about the destruction of this region in days past. And again, this scientist has been discussing this since 1983, probably landing on deaf ears and yet coming to these exact conclusions that we are beginning to understand. And not only does he line up the sites on the maps historically with the actual structures being specific temples, buildings, and even sculptures, such as sphinxes. But furthermore, discovers the remains of the fire and brimstone that was said to rain down on this city. And what's left is melt marks in the vitrified seeming rock and chunks of almost pure sulfur. Pure sulfur being the brimstone. And pure sulfur is typically not found in nature. Even in places like Yellowstone, the sulfur is only at a 40% volume. And everything turning to powder, and he calling it ash. And this really just blows me away because this is what we see all throughout the southwest of the United States, and all parts really. These seeming natural monuments, according to the mainstream, actually being remains of civilization. And out here, around the Dead Sea, in pretty good shape. Not too difficult to wrap one's head around this idea of a melted city. 
And I think one of the best proofs, especially because we have a story attached to it. And here we can see little windows in the wall all throughout. And again, the material just turning into ash and creating what Jerry would call a rock curtain over the windows. Probably wouldn't be that difficult to bust this out with a hammer. And perhaps this is what the miners in times of old were actually looking for. Someone with this understanding could now bust into these old buildings and pull out treasures or make a claim as they call it. Ultimately, grave robbers. And here, this little valley being an old road in a city and really causing us to reconsider all canyons, all waterways, to possibly be something unnatural. And personally, I have no doubt at this point. And very excited to see the research of somebody in 1983. This reminding me of some of the rocks I was showing out on the Utah-Colorado border in a past video on my off-topic channel, making me want to go back for a second look, but as of today, everything is covered in snow. Here again, just reminding me of myself in that particular video, but in this case, this scientist has a lot of excellent explanations. Here he is, Ron Wyatt. Biblical archaeologist, and I salute him. And he further went on to show all these little blast marks that I find all over the place. It's clear that something rained from the sky, burning holes through everything, and cooking the realm below. Here again, and all the little pock marks have pure sulfur that can be popped out of the center, as seen here very remarkable and nothing grows in this region of course i don't believe the timeline we know very well how distorted it is but nevertheless this being some of the oldest that we have to go off as far as our narrative is concerned this and all the ruins that we see in the southwest are the remains of one of the earlier resets i believe this reset rendering this realm into ash and we just barely see the faintest husk and imprint of what used to be but we also see signs of a more recent reset beautiful architecture clearly weathered by time but yet preserved in no way turned to ash displaying all of its glory as it did in the past and going back to the luminaries above, I've always speculated that this was the cause. Whether something is able to influence this, some intelligent life, I don't know. Most likely it's a combination of both cyclical events and tampering done by the forces of malevolent beings in our realm. It's unclear how many cycles have actually transpired. When looking at things like this, out in the middle of the desert, we really have no idea how old this realm might be. This was just shared with me by a Patreon, an excellent share, and there you can see a little car parked, just to give you an idea of the scale. And this is what appears to be either the remains of a city, or perhaps some underlying infrastructure that makes our realm tick but i always love these grids unperplexed by the topography of the region not being washed away by time or the elements and again some of the oldest ruins that can be seen the mainstream narrative not even offering any explanations other than roads for future neighborhoods. I'll show you where this is. Zoom out. There we are. And we can put on our roads. And here we go. A nice aerial view. Up here we have Las Vegas. 
surrounded by this wasteland and we've examined blast sites all through here especially in my earlier videos and down here by this dead mountain wilderness area is where those grids were as we'll see again here we go grids and signs of civilization in the absolute middle of nowhere and I have no doubt with our new understanding we're going to begin to find ruins everywhere. So here's a little share. Someone sent me this regarding the World's Fair of 1893 in Chicago. And this is the good old antique road show. I love it. And this guy bought this for a couple hundred bucks. And I think it offers us a clue into the past of this mysterious fair. What is the clue? I don't know. I thought maybe we'd figure it out together. First of all, it is a strange little souvenir. It's very heavy, it looks like. And looking like it has a little Mount Maru North Pole depiction on the top. A little dome in which you put your coins in. Very strange that it would say that they applied for the patent underneath. And essentially it is just a little safe, a little awesome safe, really. Who wouldn't want this? But also a very strange souvenir to be selling in this time period. And for me, the World's Fair is seeming to be something else, as we've discussed. Seeming like such a boring fair, and more of an education camp. A fair that you must pay, like a tuition, in order to lay claim to the new inheritance. And I believe the guy said it was made of steel and had inlaid copper. I can't imagine that this would be cheap, even in the time. It looks like they applied for a patent, but typically these fairs only lasted six months. Why even bother? And there were three figures on the box. One was Christopher Columbus, one, I believe, was some president, and this was the fair director. And this Antiques Roadshow guy kind of chuckled that this guy would have put himself next to these celebrated characters. And for our petrification segment today, I wanted to have a look at this picture that I saved. And this man was an Italian naturalist, cartographer, Egyptologist, and anatomist. He is perhaps best known for his work in the artificial petrification of human cadavers. Sagato was born in a monastery in Vidanya. As a child, Sagato learned the basic sciences from Antonio Beghini, who was a priest. Very interesting. The art of petrifying cadavers and the art of petrification in general and something that few are probably working on today and this little Japanese garden on the right side looking like petrified cubes of steak very fascinating the oldest being some of the most advanced one could see why the studio was invented all one desires is to be boxed into a soundproof room when creating art that involves sound. For me, it's similar to writing a book or maybe a chapter. If we didn't have video, we would write books. But since we do have video, we're less interested in books. Probably anybody watching these videos has more of an appreciation than most. I'm currently reading a book as we speak called The Mystery or the Secrets of the Cathedrals. It was shared with me in a comment. I eagerly jumped in, soon to find myself submerged in old hermetic alchemical teachings. And this book from 1920 has a lot to say. So that's it. I thank you so much for joining me, and do have a blessed day. Please like, 
comment and subscribe.